entire planet under them. And this Hebrew Israelite thing has gone global too. We GM the Great Millstone gone global a long time ago. That's right. Like I said, man, look, the most high gonna kick us in a high gear. We been, we never stopped being in high gear, but the most high gonna put us in a perpetual overdrive, man. Okay? In the name of Yahweh by show me how it shot. Okay? You we're gonna put so many videos out, man. And we're gonna bring you so much information. That's right. That's going to make your head spin. That's right. Because, hey, this could be the year, man. Hiya, Kwam. All right. Today we're going to go into the year of push because the apostles on the New Year's Eve of destruction, Apostle Tahar said that we're going to go on overdrive this year, that we going to push this word to, to, to the fullest. All right. And Apostle Gabal on the live stream was writing, he was in the spirit, writing heavy that this is the year of push. So, you know, the brother and I, you know, the term clicked with us so we through the spirit decided to do a show on it all right because this is the year where we give it our all you know we all supposed we always supposed to go our hardest and it's true but we get closer to the end so we have to edify the elect and try to wake up the elect to our fullest all right all right and all occupy you need to get up on this if any brothers ain't doing no shows you need to get on the bandwagon man what you waiting for you know like Yahweh Shah said, there's been many kings and many prophets that desire to see the things that y'all see, you know, that y'all brothers see, because we at the end, all right? I got one scripture. This is, um, well, we're going to kick it off in the spirit. You know, brothers ain't really got nothing prepared. This is Isaiah chapter 62, verse 6. I have set watchmen upon thy walls, O Jerusalem, which shall never hold their peace day nor night. Now, the Most High has set y'all brothers up, starting out with our apostles and our elders and their righteous fruit. He has set watchmen upon the walls, okay? So that's our job. Our job is to look out for current events, look for the signs and the times that's written in the scriptures, and filter, filter the news through the scriptures, okay? So every time you wake up, you're supposed to be looking for the signs of the Lord's coming. It says... We shall never hold their peace day nor night. So we ain't never supposed to hold our peace, man. All right? We're supposed to cry unto the Lord and sigh and cry unto the Lord for all the wickedness and abominations that's going on. All right? It says, Ye that make mention of the Lord, keep not silence. So we ain't supposed to hold our peace, man, when it comes to the wickedness of the society, the wickedness of this world. The wickedness of the so-called white man and wickedness of the two-thirds of our people. All right? This is the year of push, man. So we got to start pushing this word to the fullest. Yeah, con, man. Hey, shalom, brothers. Uh, yeah, like the brothers saying, man. This this is the year is the year we got to push, man. And it's not through our own will, but through the will of Yah by Shem Yahweh Shai, man. Because ultimately, this is the work of the Lord. You know, Hi. this ain't our work and this ain't our labor. You know, which are, if I can just get one scripture, um, straight to the point. Uh, this is Isaiah 55 and 10. For as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and maketh it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower, and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. Now the reason I bring that scripture up, because everything is happening according to the word of the Heavenly Father, man. And this is his work. His work is to 
gather together the elect in the spirit and the truth through the foolishness of preaching and we're vessels to do that work the scriptures speak of us being on workmen laborers so if we're the ve vessels to do that work then we gotta do it then and there's and a, you can see the prophecies coming to pass quick and fast um like the brother mentioned the, earlier when we were speaking the wars you got um other signs such as a uh, mass death of animals so-called natural disasters the economies you know hitting the the, the tanker is going down the hole so as you see these things happening then you should be looking for things to happen in terms of the word and the proliferation and magnification of the word and this is the year when the word is going to be magnified on an even higher level man and we have to play our part in that man through the spirit and power Yah Ba Shem Yahweh Shai hey man that's, that's valid bro because you know th I just looked up an article today where they said that Walmart is going into foreclosing you had mass amounts of Walmart closing in America in Babylon you know so these are the part of the signs man and as prophets as watchers we gotta like um you know Esau he give his bullshit uh, terminology if you see something say something well in the spiritual side if you see some news or current events you're supposed to bring it out man and filter it through the scriptures you know don't be that unfaithful uh, servant and put your talent under the napkin. If you have some edification or something you could bring out and share to the audience, bring it out. You know, you're supposed to you're supposed to not only warn the Lord's flock, you're supposed to uh, 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 edify the, the you're supposed to not only warn the flock but edify the flock to let them know that Yahweh Shah is returning. You know, I'm gonna read the next verse. Isaiah 62 and 7, and give him no rest until he establish, until he make Jerusalem a praise on earth. Okay? So we're supposed to give the Most High, we're supposed to weigh the ears of the Most High down, man. You know? We're supposed to constantly be praying, praying him and begging him to return. Okay? And we're supposed to be standing boldly in the face of the so called white man, which is Esau according to the Bible. And to let him know that his kingdom is coming down. Alright? Because that's the job of a prophet. A prophet life is solitude, man. You know, a prophet might have a family, he might have a wife and kids, things to that nature. But his job, his occupation is to prophesy. Alright? So you I can and the scriptures say, um I'm gonna say that for verbatim, but um be fervent in prophesying. Okay, you're supposed to uh, 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 be enthusiastic about doing this work, this labor of love. You're supposed to have passion, man. Like the scriptures say, they they um they refer wisdom onto a woman. You're supposed to ravish that woman, okay? Because you're supposed to be deep into this, into the scriptures, into the knowledge, wisdom, understanding of Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shah. I got another scripture. This is um Luke chapter 19, verse 13. And he called his ten servants and delivered them ten pounds and said unto them, Occupy till I come. Okay? Yahweh Shah called his ten servants and delivered them ten pounds. The ten pounds are the measures of faith. Alright? It's the different gifts that Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah bestowed upon his men. And he told them to occupy till I come. Now, let's look up this word occupy in the Greek. Strong's G 4231. Pragmatumai. Pragmatumai. To be occupied in anything. To carry on a business. To carry on the business of a banker or of a trader. Okay, what's our business that we're supposed to be carrying on in? The knowledge and wisdom and understanding of the scriptures. The teaching of this word. Yeah, kind of. I, I just wanted to throw in a quick thing. You, you, that word pretty much sounds like it... Um, might be one of the root words for pragmatic. Time. Now I just looked up the word pragmatic. It says dealing with things sensibly and realistically in a way that is based on practical <laughs> rather than theoretical considerations. Time. So basically you see there you gotta be practical in this truth man. <laughs> you gotta do this thing man. This ain't about just sitting around um, 
theorizing. Okay, sometimes right. brothers might get, you know, caught up on your own shortcomings, whatever the case may be. We all go through it, man. Sometimes you're depressed, you know what I mean? You feel like, you know, you ain't a man of the Lord or, you know, you get them demons on you trying to put you down, which you got to deal with that on your own time. <laughs> when you clock in for the Heavenly Father, man, you got to just teach this word, man. You know what I'm saying? You can't be in that slump sometimes brothers get in that slump where oh man they're just down and out they ain't gonna do a video for like a month no nah, man you, you gotta do the work man and sort your shit out on your own time man you know bro, you got brothers out there that's got different talents whatever your talent is you're supposed to be using it for the lord man because that's the only thing we're really down here to do if, if I can get one scripture um this is Ecclesiastes 1 and 3. It said, What profit have a man of all his labor, which he taketh under the sun? Alright? And I'm just going to jump down to um, verse 14. I have seen all the works that are done under the sun, and behold, all is vanity and vexation of spirit. Now, the reason I bring that scripture out is because when we're doing this work, this is not our work, man. This is the only work which is profitable, man. Doing the teaching the work. Anything else isn't really profitable, man, because it's vanity. Hey. You know what I'm saying? So that's why we gotta go hard in teaching this word, cause that's what's profitable, man. I got a scripture. This is um First Peter chapter four, verse eleven. If any man speak, let him speak of the most high if any man minister let him do it as of the ability which the most high giveth okay because every brother ain't going to have the same level of faith okay every brother ain't going to have the same amount of talents but whatever talents you do have you're supposed to use man if any man speak let him speak as the oracles of the most high if any man minister let him do it as of the ability which the Most High giveth, that the Most High in all things may be glorified through Yahweh Shai, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Okay? So everything we're supposed to do is towards the benefit of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, and towards building his, uh, and building his flock, okay? Which is the elect. That's the purpose of us going out there on the highways and byways. But not only teaching on the highways and byways, but teaching whenever we get a chance to, whenever the spirit permits. All right? This is the year of push, man. So you got to get off your asses, man, and get on your feet and start pushing this word. You'll find time for a woman. All right? You'll find time for getting you some ass. You'll find time for wearing some new fucking clothes or trying to get some designer fucking clothes. Okay? You'll find time to do anything else under the sun. But when it's time to do the work of the Lord, you slack. That's bullshit, man. You know, that's bullshit. But that's something we had to fight and overcome. Okay? All of that shit that we had when we was in the world. Okay? We got to get over that shit. We're new creatures in Yahweh Shah, Akim. You know? Yeah, can't, Ak. Because I, I just wanted to um speak on the fact that he, the year of the push. Look, man, time is short. Even the devil know that. So you see that they're tripling and doubling their agenda. Um, they're going hard. And they're doing this thing on a worldwide basis, man. Like the brother of Barack Kabar, he's over there in Babylon. I'm over here in Bobby London. They working over there. They're working over here. They're working in France. You know what I'm saying? They're working in China. They're doing their thing because they're fulfilling that side of the prophecy. Like we always say, they're, they're doing their work. We got to do our work, which, like the brother said, is raising up the tribes, man, beginning with the elect. And brothers have to understand that there's a great number, man. There's a lot of work to be done. There's a lot of brothers that need to be taught. You got the apostles, okay? You got the elders. That's a very small group of men. Even... The other churches of GMS, you got the New York camp, the LA camp, 
Dallas camp, brothers in Toronto, you know what I'm saying, brothers uh, Mississippi, all, all kind of states, all, all in London, Holland, okay, but how great is that number? That's a small number, it's not always going to be like that. The word of the Lord is going to be magnified and not only that, the followers of the Lord is going to be magnified, man. The house is going to be built, but it's not on a lazy tip. You know what I'm saying? we got to work harder as the time is shorter. And if you go on one of them building sites, that's how they are. When they got to meet a certain deadline and they're getting towards the end, people start working on overdrive, start doing overtime. You know what I'm saying? Hey, you got it, Ark. Matthew chapter 9 verse 37. Then saith he unto his disciples, The harvest is truly plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. What were you reading again? Yeah, no, Khan, that's on point. Because I was just thinking about just now. Because Khan. we got to go back, all the way back to over 2,000 years ago when the Lord was on earth. This thing in Yahweh Shai started with Yahweh Shai. He was that um, cornerstone, that precious stone. And he what? Set up 12 men. Just 12 men. He had those 12 men. He taught those 12 men. I believe you had the 70, but the 70 weren't with him. So you had those 12 men. The Lord sent forth those 12 men. Then you had the 70. That's how small this thing started. To the point where the truth grew so fast and got so vast because in certain days, 5,000 men were sealed. You know, thousands of men were sealed in the spirit in a matter of a day. That's, that's how the Lord did it 2,000 years ago to the point where this truth grew and grew and grew and it became a problem for Rome. It, it ceased to be a fringe um, What do you want to call it? Uh, a fringe group It became s significant That's the word It became a significant group Of men And that's going to happen all over again The real, the real men is going to grow To the point where These elites They're going to have to come down with persecution Because this truth won't be ignored and that's the time we're going into. We're going into a time where the word is going to be magnified. Um, you're going to get countless amounts of brothers coming into this truth. And when I say coming to this truth, I don't mean just waking up to the fact that they're Israelites. Because that's we've gone past that stage now. I'm talking about coming into the truth which is being taught by the apostles and elders of Great, Mill, Great Millstone. Because that's the only truth. That if you're outside of that, then you ain't really teaching the truth. You ain't teaching the gospel. Point blank, man. We've gone past that point, man. Just because you know you're an Israelite don't mean shit no more. Okay, that's that's all bullshit. You gotta have the whole truth. Then you're considered to have the gospel. And then they're gonna have to come down with that persecution, man, on a real level. Cause that's what happened two thousand years ago, man. Then they had to start killing the apostles and killing different men in this because the truth became too big. Go on, yeah. yeah, yeah, that's a beautiful point, brother. You know, because <clears throat> we the, the scriptures, all right. The scriptures are the true terror to the new world order, okay? Because they prophesied the downfall of this new world order, of the plans of the elites, okay? All right. So that's a beautiful point. That, but that that's all a part of prophecy, man. Because we're coming to the end, all right. And as we come into the end, the elect, more and more of the elect is being sealed, okay? More laborers are coming to this harvest, all right? And as we come closer to that end, all right, um, destruction is going to happen. Judgment is going to happen, okay? And that's what we waiting for. We waiting to see the judgment of the Lord's enemies, man. We waiting to see the judgment of two thirds of our people and two uh, and, and this fucking devil. All right. We waiting for the judgment of Esau, man. I got a scripture. Um, 
This is Second Ezra chapter 8 verse 28 As for faith It shall flourish Corruption shall be overcome And the truth Which have been so long without fruit Shall be declared Okay It shall be declared I can, You know Because of this word being pushed out On a grand scale Our apostles Was out there like the brother said they was, what, it was like 10 of them? It was our apostles and the elders, all right? They was out there on 34th and 7th by themselves with no fruit, okay? And then the year 2007 and on, this truth, the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding of Yahweh Bashi, Yahweh Shai, went out throughout the earth via YouTube, via the internet, and you just see the flocks of Israel starting to come back, man. Brothers coming back to who they are, their heritage and their nationality. And they start to call upon the name of the Father, Yahweh, and the name of his son, Yahweh Shah. And that's a part of prophecy, man. So just like our apostles is on fire pushing this word, I can you need to get on fire pushing this word, man. You know? You need to get on fire, man. Like like Isaiah said, it was burning with inside him, man. The fire of the word of the Lord, man. He couldn't contain it. Like the scriptures say in Amos, it says, the word the Lord have spoken. Who can but prophesy, man? You can't resist to tell this truth. You can't resist to prophesy once you start to hear the word of the Lord. Just like all you Akin, when you first heard this truth, when you first heard the apostles and elders, you couldn't resist to tell somebody that they was an Israelite, that you was an Israelite. So that fire you had when you first came into this thing, that's the same fire you need to keep as you grow older in this thing, all right? Until we get to the end. Got it, brother. Yeah, Khan. Basically, you got to be passionate about your work, man. You know, it all goes back to being passionate. And the more you see these prophecies coming to pass, man, that should fire you up even more. That should grow your faith because you, you, you heard these things will happen. And you see them happening more and more. So really, we ain't got no excuse, man. You know what I'm saying? We got, hey, I don't want to sound like Eminem. But, <laughs> hey, Eminem said you only got one shot. That's right. You can't turn back the time and say, oh, you know, I wasn't really going hard back then. You know, let me go back two, two years or a year or two months or one month and go hard again. No, the Lord will give you one chance, man. Yesterday's gone. Today's another day. That's right. Lord will. That's right. Tomorrow will be another day. Ain't nobody can't turn back the hands of time. I ain't trying to sound like a a music artist, but hey, that's that's what it is. You can't turn back the hands of time. We got one chance to do this great work. I I gotta keep going back to that. This is the great work of Yahweh Bar Shem Yahweh Shai. I know a lot of these other groups out here seem to think that this is of themselves. This is the work of Yahweh Bar Shem Yahweh Shai. His great work, his finale, his masterpiece. He's about to beautify his monument unto himself, which is Zion. He's about to glorify his son. He's about to glorify his name. And he's doing it in his power. And he's given us the great honor. To be a part of that man To be a vessel onto that What more can you want Than to be a part of that great work You got niggas out there They want to be part of the um, Championship winning team They want to be part of that team That won the Super Bowl That's vanity We're talking about the great work man Of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai So that's why we got to go hard man That's a great honour and you have to pray to Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai that He uses you and puts a spirit on you to do that work. Because there is also great reward in that. You know? But um, you, saw, you said about speaking, right, Ark? Yeah, well, if I remember correctly, I believe it was David that said, I believe and thus I spoke. So if you believe this truth, you're really going to speak it, man. It's as simple as that. 
we ain't the time to play games, man. Real soon, brother, you know, or maybe you could get a head chopped off for this word. Sorry. You know what I'm saying? This this truth is worth dying for. If it's worth dying for, then it's worth doing the work. Sorry. Sorry. I just want to bring a quick scripture. Okay. This is scripture Yashawamba. Um, was um, throwing out there uh, Revelation 12 and 17 and the dragon was rough with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Yahweh Shai HaMashiach that's, all, that's the time we're going into man Because this devil, man, every time we go out there and we teach this word, this devil goes down, man. There's power in the word. There's power in doing this work, man. You know, that's that's key. This is a spiritual war, man. Every time we go out there you, and you teach the word or you do a, a video, you might think you only got one hit or two hit or zero hit. It doesn't matter. The word doesn't go out void, man. Every time you do that, you're doing a, a bombardment on Satan. So we gotta go hard. Okay, okay. So we can use that, brother. You know? Spirit, <laughs> man. Yeah, and it's beautiful what the brother said. And he quoted that. He brought that scripture out earlier. I said 55 and 11, 10 and 11. You know, the word, the word of the Lord doesn't go out void, man. You gotta remember, this is a thing of faith, man. You know? And what's faith? A substance of things hoped for, the things, the evidence of things not seen. So you gotta have faith that this word is reaching who it's supposed to reach. You have to have faith when you do those shows that it's edifying who it's supposed to edify. Okay? He that have ears, let them hear. You know? It's, remember, we're unprofitable servants. Okay? We doing this because the Lord commanded, first and foremost, the Lord commanded us to. But two, for the fear of the Lord. And three, because we want to please the Lord. Okay? We're prisoners of hope. Alright? We have nowhere else to go. Our backs is against the wall, man. The most high open our eyes to this world that is polluting. It's filthy. It's abominable. It's fucking transgenderized. Transgenderized. If that's GMO. The word. <laughs> you know so you know like in the movie they lived with Roddy Roddy Piper alright when he, he had received when he got them shades and he started to see people's faces and saw the signs and he saw everything for what it was that's how the, that's what the most High did to us man you know and we saw the truth so now we have to tell the truth we have to give other people we have to show other people man and guess what? The Most High is going to do His job. We have our job to do it. The Most High is going to do His job. Our job is to teach His word and preach His word as much as we can. And the Most High is the one that's going to uh, increase. All right? Come. He's the one. Because like, like I said, Paul watereth, Apollo was planted, or vice versa. But the Most High gives the increase. So you post to labor because we are husbandmen. We post to plant. And the Most High does his job whether he want to wake that brother up or wake a brother up through the YouTube, through the internet, or through uh, being out there prophesying. Okay? This is, uh, we're going to wrap it up in a few, bro, because, you know, you know, brothers can go on and on and on. <laughs> it's been like 35 minutes already. Come on, man. But how long, how long has it been going? 30 minutes and, yeah, 30 minutes. All right, that's good, that's good. So, you know, like 35 minutes, 36. Yeah, it's so brothers, Jake got short attention span. Come on, man. <laughs> you know, um, this is Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 10. Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with thy might. For there is no work, nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave. I'm going to read that again. Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with thy might. So when it comes to this truth, like the brother quoted earlier, the greatest work in the world, the best job, the best employment in the world, the knowledge
much wisdom and understanding of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, the true and living power. Okay, we we got the greatest positions in the world, Akim. You post and you supposed to do it with your might, man. Because we have the true and living power behind us. You can ask the true and living power for something, and he can give it to you. You can ask the Most High to not answer someone's prayers, or if someone did you wrong, and you want a judgment to fall upon them, you can ask the Most High to do it for you, man. And all he asks for you is to push his word and endure to that end. Keep his, com keep your com keep his commandments to the best of your ability. All right? Pray without ceasing fast and to not go into the way of this world because it's polluted and it shall destroy you even with a sword of destruction. For there is no work, nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave whether thou goest. Because once you're dead, you're dead, man. That's it. Because you can't bring back yesterday and you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. So you got to do what you got to do right now. You got to seize the moment right now. Tomorrow's never promised. All right? Tomorrow is never promised. That's why we do things in Lord's will. But you got to do what you got to do right now, man. Yeah, come. I just got the one scripture then. Uh, 1 Corinthians 9 and 16. For though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of, for necessity is laid upon me. Yea, woe is unto me. If I preach not the gospel. Hey. So if the Lord call you to do this work. You better do the work. You know. Lest you be destroyed. So. We got to go hard for our Lord man. Like a good samurai. And. Do what we got to do man. Because this, this only going to happen once. This is the. <laughs> this, this ain't going to happen again. Imagine. You got eternity. We ain't, there ain't gonna be no time a billion, a trillion, quadrillion years from now where we're gonna get the opportunity to do this. And this is honorable, man. What we're doing is an honorable thing, man. It's great honor. We gotta get back into that mentality, man. Making a warfare for your power and serving him and being persecuted and suffering for your Lord is great honor. You know? Yeah, that's 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 all I got to say on that point, man. Time, time. Um, you know, with that, you know, I hope your brothers are edified through the spirit. And, you know, until next time, I say shalom. Guy, okay, brother, you got any closing statements? Yeah, Khan. Year with a push, 2016. Abad, Baba, Kwame Shala. That's right. That's right. Yeah, the push. Shalom, Mark. Yo. Shalom. Hey, bro,